Hi there, welcome to this tutorial in regards to preparing your songs uh, before you DJ with Ableton. You're going to need Platinum Notes, Zone Mixed and Key 4. Um, the first thing you need to do is drag your MP3 into Platinum Notes and then click Kill File and that's going to check the dynamic range of the track and ensures that it, when it creates a new file, wherever you choose to produce it, it will have the perceived loudness of around minus 13 dB. So what this means is, when you apply this to your whole collection of music, every track has the same perceived loudness. So it's kind of doing what Tractor does with its auto gain. So it's kind of a hack, but that's the only way you can kind of do it with Ableton. Uh, just looking at some of the preferences. Now I, I convert to WAV because Ableton prefers WAV files. If you use MP3 files in Ableton, it will create a cache, a WAV cache, so it's just irrelevant. So my theory is you might as well just bounce it out as a WAV and then just delete the original MP3 file. So when I bounce it, it goes to a particular folder in my hard drive uh, where it can be prepared in terms of being warped and all that. So that's that's already been done, which is just here. And you can tell it's got the key and tempo there already. That's because I used mixed in key. So after it was done, I dragged the file in. With Ableton, it's uh, not like Tractor where it reads the MP3 tags. It can you know you only you kind of you can only see the file name. So it's just worth automatically renaming the files with key BPM and then the original file name. So once that's done, this is a quick preview of what your get your collection looking like once it's all kind of done. It's um, you've got your, your your main file, which you can which you can preview. This is the uh, package, the pack that we are. Go I'm just about to show you how to create, and this is great if you, if you're a controllerist and you want to just quickly fire in kind of loops, you simply drag over, and away you go. So basically. I always start with the first loop, first sorry, first clip being a loop. These are the same uh, music file it's pulling on. It's just, just different clips, telling Ableton where to kind of loop and set cues. So here's the loop, and then when I'm ready to drop it into the next track, uh, this is the drop. Push me, and then just hurt me till I can. Now the advantage of that being, um, when you just want to quickly get back into a loop, you know, you, you just you've got all your songs. The first clip is always a loop, so it, there's little going on in terms of, you know, it's easy easy to mix the tracks. For example, like this. Give you a quick example of why this is so good. Just I'm just literally gonna play stuff. You can see how quickly you can build up DJ sets.
enough of that, because I'm going to get carried away here. So let's just quickly go back to our file that we created, uh, which is this one. Okay. Um, just ignore that, because uh, I've actually already kind of worked with this file before. But the first thing you need to do when you load it up is always make sure it's in complex pro mode. That's the algorithm Ableton's reading it. If you have it stuck on beat mode, the quality is really bad, it's, and you'll notice it when you change the uh, tempo. It will st start to sound um, deteriorated in the sound because that, that mode was designed for um, beat, beats and transients, quick transients. So Complex Pro is what you need. You need a good laptop as well because the algorithm just kind of strain your CPU a little bit. So I've already automatically got the first um, watermark down there. But what I usually do is, if I know that's the first downbeat, set it to 1.1 here, and then just go straight from here. And then it, because it's a, a straight track, house track, look, you can see that it's not really hard. You just drag it over. And there's two ways to do it. Instead of double clicking and then moving it, if you drag it, it's gonna change the whole tempo between them two points. And I find that's 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 a lot better because um, you're adjusting the tempo. Now, if you want to just quickly check how that sounds, get you get your metronome going. So as you can tell, it's nice and tight, and you usually find that you can warp stuff a lot lot quicker than Tractor. I found. Um, I'm, you might be a little bit different if you're an experienced tractor user, but I find Ableton just so quick to kind of tap in. And when it comes into its zone, is like R and B and stuff like that with loads of swing. You can tightly um, get it warped, and it's quite phenomenal what kind of mixing you can do. Anyway, I'm going to save it. So now, now it's um, now we've created the warp. Now the first thing you want to do on the first clip, as shown before, is you want to find a perfect intro point. I like that because it's quite, you know, there's not much going on there, and that's exactly what we want. And then I would personally use the second clip here as a drop point because it is effects on it, it goes straight into the vocals after. So that's super. And that's done. Now, you can rename these clips, intro and whatever, but you'll probably find that you only use two two or three clips. Um, but if you are going to rename it, fine, but just make sure you copy that little bit of information in the clip because what you can do is drag these clips back in. And it's asking me, do I want to... We're creating a pack, essentially, and it's asking, do I want to include the music file into the pack? There's no point because we have the the music file sitting side by side with the pack anyway, so you don't need to copy that. And it's asking us what we want to call the clip, just paste, because that's what we've, we just copied in the file name there. And what that do is sitly tight next to the music file, because it's, it's got the exact same name as it, but obviously just different extensions. Now that's done, I usually just drag that into my music collection, Mine's quite simple, so I do by tempo, and then I'll just call that um, Electro House, so that's that one there. Drag that in there, and it's it's in there now. There you go, and you know, it's just so simple. See the fact that that intro, you know, when you build up intro um, loops in your packs, the way I've done it, every every one I've got here starts on an intro. Yeah. And that is half the battle won there. So it's and you know it's also good when you're in the middle of a track and you kind of want to get back to the intro. You know, you look at the dance floor and they're not feeling it, and you're like, right, I need to get something else mixed. It's just 
so simple. Now obviously then transitions back to the intro sound a little bit rough and I'm going to show you in a couple of tutorials later the effects you can use to create good transitions um, so people can't really tell that you've you know it sounds more polished when you go back to the intro clips um, so we go back to that later but just a quick overcap of how I organize my files so it's by tempo which is great um, for you know it's all kind of what works in the right speed So everything from R&B, some R&B is very difficult to um, to um, beat match, and you know Ableton is kind of a, it's kind of a breeze to be fair. And the other good thing is that sometimes you find some tracks they sound a little bit weak on their own, and um, you kind of want to leave some loops in there just in. In the background, maybe you might filter it a little bit, and it just adds more support on other tracks as well, which is really useful. So you're starting to see that you know these mixes are sounding really good and it's not just because of the intros it's also because everything is organized by key yeah you can actually see that that's the whole point we use mixing keys everything is organized yeah and the rule is with mixing key you can go two down or two up on the numbers two up is called power mixing I usually go up because it adds it sounds like it's adding anticipation to the actual set itself but you'll be I haven't, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't really heard one bad mix yet where stuff doesn't work. The software is pretty accurate, I have to say. Here's another example. Actually, this is a good example. Can you see here where it's loading the clip? Here's an example of why you always want to use Wave because this is an MP3 file and I've gone past the point of my cache, uh, which is stated here. And basically, in mid set, sometimes you're waiting for clips to load. So if if you if you if if your whole music collection is Wave, which I only realised halfway through my collection, because you can see there's a lot of MP3s there. Um, you don't have to wait around. You don't have to make caches or anything like that, so. If I had my controller, you could kind of hear how I you know, quickly mix stuff in, but you know, you get the idea that the mixing sounds pretty good with the mixing key. So yeah, that, that, that's how I do it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them on the blog. Uh, I'd love to get back to you. Thank you.